U.S. home prices still face a steep and sustained decline this year, economist warns. Uh, pa, 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 there we go. So economist Kieran Clancy from Pantheon Macroeconomics warns that the U.S. housing market is on the verge of a steep and sustained decline in home prices. Contrary to the belief of a recovery, Clancy argues we are baffled by the emerging narrative because it isn't recovering. Clancy emphasizes the crucial need for improved affordability in the housing market through recovery. He points out that affordability has declined with the median single-family house price surging 10% to 350 in the second quarter, resulting in the highest debt-to-income ratio since 2007. To achieve a genuine recovery, Clancy states, home sales can't recover until affordability improves, which requires lower mortgage rates or falling home prices or both. He highlights that the housing market is shifting from a collapse in demand and sales to a phase of falling prices and housing-related consumption. Tom, what is going on with real estate? I keep getting guys telling me, I told you the market crash is not here. I told you real estate's going to be fine. I told you it's not going to go down. What's really going on with real estate? Well, I'm hearing a lot of that, too. But we have to remember, we're living in South Florida, and we've had a huge influx in demand and all those people moving here. Remember, the we're hearing in Florida, what do we got? We got, like, uh, uh, they said nine, 900 from California 900 and New a York. week, something like week. that, 900 a week moving to Florida. Yep. And so what's happened is in Florida, the prices are not dropping down because you still have a lot of cash buyers from the Northeast that have come down here holding it. But in the rest of the United States, it's just not affordable. And remember, Pat, you knew about this because right at the time you were founding um, PHP, remember 09, we had just got through that area where back end ratio, 39, 38, nah, 45 is fine. Nina, no income, no assets, no problem. Well, that's not quite on the table here, but right now we don't have enough uh, supply. Not enough people are willing to put their house on, on the market in the United States. That is still a fact. And so with the limited supply, prices have moved very slowly. And with the interest rates, which were almost 8%, but they dropped back like 6.75, 7% mm -hmm. um, a week ago, that is keeping, keeping it there. And so it's artificial. And so as soon as either of those moves, Pat, we get a little more supply or the rates go down, prices are coming down. And that's what everybody is saying is this is an artificial scaffolding. Right now we have about a million houses on the uh, market. And remember a couple weeks ago, PBD podcast, last time we did home team, remember we looked at the normal inventory is like three and a half, four million houses. And it was easily 50% or less of what's normal. So what's going on right now is the high interest rates and the low supply because people don't want to sell their house uh, even if they have to move for their job they'd rather airbnb the old house with a nice low interest rate and then rent in the new place and so we are living on the edge of a snap where housing it, it maybe it's not going to crash through the floor but it's going to drop and that's what this economist is talking about and i think he is absolutely correct you don't see it right now especially in south florida where we have other things at play <clears throat> but it's going to so, move so here's so rob can you pull up the tweet a tweet i just sent you uh, I, I posted this yesterday. Uh, uh, Barry Habib sent me an article. I took a look at it, went through the whole thing. Very interesting data. And then I posted this. I said, that, you know, because a lot of people are asking the question about why people aren't selling or buying a house. 92% of Americans have a mortgage right now below 6%. There you go. 92. And what's the That's current 30 year fixed? Tom, what's the current 30 the year fixed? Oh, right right now, 678 seven, to 7 and a quarter. Yeah. Good credit, half a million dollars. 678. No, 30 year fix is 7.6%. The 15 year fix is 6.8% as of today. 7.5% is a 30 yes. year fix. So if 92% of Americans have a mortgage on those 6%, no, no, zoom out so I can read it, Rob. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I appreciate the respect, but I can't. Go zoom out. I don't have those eyes, Rob. I'm 44. Zoom there you go. In, yeah. So zoom in is what I mean. My <laughs> English is up. So, so 92% <laughs> of much. Americans have a mortgage below 6%. Wow. If they want to refi right now, so imagine a salesperson comes up and says, hey, Johnny, why don't we refinance your mortgage? You got 6% right now. I can get you 7.5%. 61% are below 4%. 23% have a mortgage below 3%. By the way, if you're watching this. Airbnbs, baby. They're not letting go of those. If you're watching this and you're comfortable about it, post your interest rate in the comment section. I'm curious. So why would, what would cause people to start buying and selling? Number one, Americans running out of savings. This is a very interesting data. In 2020, collectively, we had $3 trillion in cash at the bank. 
2021 and went to two and a half trillion. Look at the, look at the drop off Jeez. from 21 to 22. It dropped off to 686 billion in cash. As of April, we have 800 billion dollars. We went up slightly, but as saving decreases, that panic could cause owners to sell at a lower price to take their equity out. Number two, unemployment, 3.6. Some of us thought it was going to go to 10 percent, like 08. Hasn't happened yet. The market expected unemployment to skyrocket if Powell kept increasing rates. We haven't seen that. The third one is probably the most important one. Congress has more power than Powell. Every time Powell increased the rates to help address obsession the government has with overspending the last 14 years with low interest rates, the whole economic expansion, they say 128 months. It wasn't 128 months. It was like 150 months. If you take COVID out, that was going to go for 150 months of cheap money. Congress undermined it by delaying the time bomb that was coming to next generation. Uh, so what will happen with a massive crash in real estate? I don't think so. Maybe certain pockets. Here's the point. No politician or majority of Congress has the brass to do what actually is best for America. There's a 0% chance that that'll happen. Mm. Because the right thing to do is the following. Yesterday, Brandon and I uh, are doing an uh, episode on uh, hospital cost. Okay. It's something nobody talks about. And what's happened with the price of hospital cost, per $100 of what it costs the hospital to charge, they're now charging $440, okay? It mm. used to be $200 in 1995, 1998. So that $200 is now $400. If somebody asks you a question right now, how much would a bypass surgery cost? You know what the answer is? No one will tell you. A bypass? They did a surgery. They did a, 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 a survey bypass. calling a hundred and one different hospitals, asking, "What is a bypass? Heart bypass? Yeah, yeah. What does mm -hmm. a surgery cost?" Nobody gave them the answer. Half of them gave the answer. It ranged between forty-four thousand to four hundred eighty thousand dollars. Okay, from forty-four to four eighty on a bypass surgery for your heart. Then we went a little bit deeper, and we saw the Medicare. And Medicaid. So the Medicare, Medicaid that we're taking care of, the elderly folks, the, the folks that are actually getting the benefits, they pay little to nothing. The people that are getting the benefits or the people that are not paying anything into it only contribute for 6% of the actual cost for Medicare and Medicaid. Guess who's paying the other 94%? The working man who's doing their part, they're paying for Medicare and Medicaid. What's the moral of the story here? The right thing for us to do with Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, you know what the right thing is for us to do? Mm. We got to change it. <laughs> yeah. We can't continue like this because right now the way we're looking at Medicare and Medicaid, the idea is, well, let the younger generation pay for it. They're supposed to pay for baby boomers. I'm sorry. This is not a responsible thing to do. Guys, we can hear you guys. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Are you guys having issues? It's a, it's a lot of a... Uh, so the whole thing with Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, if the younger generation keeps having to pay for it, they're going to go bankrupt. The older generation, the traditionalists, the baby boomers are sitting there saying, oh, we got to get the benefits. But why isn't anybody wanting to change the benefits of Medicare, Medicaid? Ain't nobody going to get reelected. Mm -hmm. Nobody going to get reelected. What does this have to do with interest rates? Same exact thing. The right thing for us to do right now is to keep the rates high for a long time, mm -hmm. have a small little market correction happen, but that's not going to get anybody to get reelected. We have to print more money and put it in the bank, and we have to print more money to put in the economy. And people are sitting there saying, forget about what Powell is doing. So my thoughts on what's going to happen with real estate is we may see a small little adjustment here and there in different you know, pockets of America. I, Tom, I don't necessarily see a big crash coming with real estate anytime soon. No, I, I see the drop in pockets. You summarized it there. And that's why I talked about yeah. South Florida has got some things here because of the massive demand and the number of people here. I don't see it moving a lot in South Florida, but there are already markets where it is moving and it's, it's the move markets where the underlying structure is also there. People moving out of San Diego, people Adam. moving out of California. It's interesting that you bring up the Medicare and the Medicaid, you know, entitlement programs, obviously the big debate over the last decades have been the social security. Do we extend the age? Do we extend the age limits? You see what's going on in France right now with all the protests. They want to extend um, their version of social security. What to what are the ages, Tom? They wanted people to work five years longer. You have the older people saying, we don't want to work this long. We have the younger people saying, get yep. the hell out of here already. It's, it, I mean, the, the reality is this, people are living longer. And that, I mean, I'm in the longevity market, so I understand. 
it's uh, it's an interesting dilemma of what they do with Medicare and Medicaid. And as you said, they just want to kick the can down the road, just like they do with the debt ceiling. Nobody wants to be the politician that comes in and says, blow it all up. That's not what we're doing here. Fun, interesting that you bring up the, the rising costs in health care. The only thing that I think that has increased to that amount has been the cost of college, right? We've done many conversations about how the, the cost of college has skyrocketed, 4x, 5x, 10x, but is your education that much better? I would like to know how it works in the medical field. Um, when, it gets to, when it comes to mortgages, here's how I see it. Tom brought up a good point about supply and demand. Obviously, in Florida, everyone's moving down here. We've seen people moving to Miami, Naples, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Boca, Palm Beach, everyone in Florida, Jacksonville, supply and demand. The way I look at it is, it's actually a different terminology that I would use. I would use, I would use cheap versus expensive. So if you went to go buy a house, you know, four years ago, the interest rates were the lowest of all time, you know, below 3%, 2.96%. We, we all have uh, the ability to remember pre-COVID. And you're like, all right, cool. The, the average cost of a house back then was 250, 275. Interest rates were below three. All right, cool. What's going on now? Well, the average cost of a house in America today is 350 freaking grand. All right, so they've gone up 75, 100 grand. And now interest rates have gone from essentially 3% to 6, 7%. So if you're the average guy, if you're Vinny, you're me, we're just like, yeah, this isn't a good deal. <laughs> and it just like doesn't make sense unless you need to. It's very, the fact that you said that 92% yeah. of Americans have an interest rate below 6%, who the hell would want to sell at this point? No, nobody's going to want to sell nope. it. And by the way, I'll, I'll say this last part before we go into the next story is uh, home prices fall as would-be buyers face high rates, low supply. This is Wall Street Journal. Existing home sales in June declined 3.3% compared to previous month, reaching the slowest sales pace since January. The national medium existing home prices fell 0.9% from a year earlier to 4.10, second highest level on the record. The average rate for 30-year fixed right now is 6.78. In the south, existing home prices fell by 5.4%. And in the West, 5.1%. And there are 1.08 million homes for sale under contract at the end of June, unchanged from May, and down 13.6% from previous year. The number of new listings in June decreased. Decreased. That's the kicker. Decreased by 26% compared to the mm -hmm. previous year. There's, There's a supply, supply and demand there. Why, why would somebody sell a house right now? So unless if Why they, would somebody buy a house yeah, right I'm not now buying is another it's, question. It's, but, but it's, it's but like it's a stalemate. Actually, believe it or not, it's more why would somebody sell a house right now? Right. Why would somebody sell your house right now? I got a low rate. I can rent this out. I don't have to worry about it. My payment is good. I don't have a reason the, to sell it right now. I guess the only reason you would sell is it's if you would go to rent. Meaning it's like, too, all right, I've had this house. I've had two kids. They're yeah, out of the house. Yeah. I'm 60 years old. I no longer need a four-bedroom house. Me and my wife will go get a little two-bedroom condo. Income boom, needs to increase we'll take the million for, for bucks and go. Sense. What's that? Increase needs to, you know, income. income needs to increase for it to make sense. People are not making more money. It's not like all of a sudden your income's going to go up 25% a year. It's just not going to happen. So what's going to happen? Only the people that can afford can buy. Mm -hmm. Only the Black Rocks are going to go buy the entire marketplace, no one, and then we're going to be a renter's market for a decade or two. This, this is the part that when you go look at cycles of real estate, mm -hmm. the last however many decades, there are many seasons where we went through a decade of being a renter's market. People just didn't want to buy. There are many decades where we're like, yeah, I'm good. I don't need to buy. Why would I buy? I'll go renter. And then all of a sudden, boom, it became buyer's market. And then again, seller's market. And then renter's market. So it's either a seller's market, mm -hmm. it's a buyer's market, or it's a renter's market. Today, it's none of the above except yeah, for renting. Yeah, what is it today? No, it's probably renting today. What yeah. are you going to do to buy? There's no reason to buy today because it's not like you're going to – well, long-term real estate's going to do fine. It's a, it's mm -hmm. a non-duplicatable non asset right. so you can increase your net worth. But, Tom, you look like you were dying to say something. Yeah, the, no, the, the last item on this is this is – this cycle is being complicated by the impact of Airbnb because people are able to rent houses that have low interest rates. And I was reading it only takes about nine rental days a month to cover the house. So if my job forced me to move from Bedminster, New Jersey to Raleigh, North Carolina, because that's where I had to find the job. And with COVID and everything, I had to work and so I moved. And I don't sell my house in Bedminster. All I have to do is get eight be Airbnb nights out of it, and I can cover that 
3% mortgage. That situation and the platform Airbnb did not exist in 08 or 09 right. or in 12, 14 the way it Very does. Very good point. So, so, so people, so sellers have more That reduces the supply. Option. Sellers yeah. have more options that I'm like, I don't need to sell it right now. So Airbnb is indirectly impacting a market where realtors don't have enough supply to sell. By the way, realtors must not like Airbnb or would a great realtor sell a house saying, look, well, if it doesn't work out, just put it on Airbnb. You're going to be fine. So maybe there's a different way of selling well, it today. Hey, if you enjoyed this short clip, you want to watch the whole thing, click over here. But if you want to make 2023 the beginning of the greatest years of your life, I host a conference once a year. It's called the Vault Conference where 3,000 CEOs, executive entrepreneurs from around the world come together to strategize for three and a half days. This year, it's going to be at Miami Diplomat Resort. And the speakers this year is going to be Tom Brady. He'll be there. I'll be interviewing him. Mike Tyson, Will Gadara, the guy that ran 11 Madison in New York. If you run a business, if you're a CEO, entrepreneur, and executive, this is not an event you want to miss out on. Get yourself, your spouse, your business partner, your running mates registered. And I look forward to seeing you there. Click on the link here or see the link in the description. And I hope to spend three and a half days with you in Miami in August and September. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.